Palantir's stock price has nearly quadrupled since its direct listing last September. The data mining firm attracted a stampede of bulls after it posted a strong third quarter earnings report last November, hiked its full year revenue guidance and signed new government and enterprise contracts. But Palantir's meteoric rise has also raised red flags. At $36 a share, the stock trades at nearly 50 times next year's sales, making it one of the market's priciest tech stocks. Today, we will check out why you should invest in Palantir technology stock. Number 10. Sticky Government Contracts In its prospectus, Palantir claims it will become default operating system for data across the U.S. government. Its Gotham platform, which mainly serves government clients, already helps the U.S. military, FBI, CIA, and other government agencies make data-driven decisions. Palantir's revenue from government customers rose 73% year-over-year to $420.3 million, or 55% of its top line, in the first nine months of 2020. During the third quarter, it secured a new AI contract with the U.S. Army. Last December, the U.S. Army renewed a second year of a four-year analytic partnership, which provided for one base year and three optional years, with Palantir. The same month, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, which already uses some of Gotham's tools, awarded Palantir a new three-year contract to track the development of new drugs. In January, the U.S. Army hired Palantir to modernize its ground stations. This contract, which will start with a prototype and expand over four phases, could be worth up to $250 million. These contracts all indicate Gotham is sticky and will allow Palantir to deploy additional services to boost its average revenue per customer and widen its moat against its potential challengers. Number 9. Growth Potential in the Enterprise Market Palantir also helps enterprise customers process data with its Foundry platform. The Wall Street Bears often claim Foundry faces too much competition in the enterprise analytics market, but Palantir's enterprise revenue still rose 30% year-over-year to $320.3 million, or 45% of its top line, in the first nine months of 2020. A medical professional assesses data on a tablet. During the third quarter, Foundry signed a new contract with the National Institutes of Health, renewed a contract with a big aerospace customer, and pulled a major consumer goods company away from an unnamed rival. Last December, it signed a new two-year Foundry contract with the UK National Health Service, NHS, to track COVID-19 infections. Throughout January and February, it expanded its Foundry deals with Fujitsu and BP, New York Stock Exchange, BP, while signing new contracts with PG&E, Rio Tinto, and IBM. These deals indicate Foundry's tools can be applied to a wide range of industries, including energy management services for PG&E and BP, optimizing mining operations for Rio Tinto or optimizing AI tools for IBM, and will likely keep growing after Gotham's growth slows down. Number 8. Mine the Stock-Based Compensation like many high-growth tech companies, Palantir subsidizes its employees' salaries with stock bonuses to conserve its cash. As a result, its stock-based compensation more than tripled year-over-year year to $241.8 million during the fourth quarter and consumed 75% of its revenue. Stock-based compensation often remains elevated after a company's public debut even if it's a direct listing by Palantir's rather than a traditional IPO, because insiders still want to cash out their options. But that compensation ratio usually declines significantly as the company matures. If we back out those expenses, the associated payroll taxes and direct listing costs from both quarters, Palantir would have posted an operating profit of $104.1 million compared to a loss of $70.1 million a year ago. Number 7. 
It's a great artificial intelligence play. The global AI market could still grow at a compound annual growth rate of 42.2% between 2020 and 2027, according to Grandview Research, as AI tools are increasingly used to process data across a wide range of industries. That secular trend will light a fire under companies like Palantir that process large amounts of data into actionable strategies. Those tailwinds could help Palantir generate high double-digit sales growth over the next decade and help its stock grow into its premium valuation. Number 6. Rising Margins Palantir's adjusted growth margin, contribution margin which excludes sales and marketing costs and stock-based compensation, and operating margin all expanded in the fourth quarter and for the full year. Gross margin quarter 4, 2019, 72%. Quarter 4, 2020, 84%. Fiscal year 2019, 71%. Fiscal year 2020, 81%. Contribution margin, fourth quarter 2019, 33%. Fourth quarter 2020, 62%. Fiscal year 2019, 21%. Fiscal year 2020, 54%. Operating margin, quarter four 2019, 31%. Quarter four 2020, 32%. Fiscal year 2019, 45%. Fiscal year 2019, 17%. Those rising numbers indicate Palantir still has plenty of pricing power and a viable path towards generating stable long-term profits. Number 5. Rising Revenue Per Customer In the fourth quarter, Palantir signed 21 contracts worth $5 million or more, including 12 contracts worth $10 million or more. Its major wins included deals with Rio Tinto, PG&E, BP, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, the FDA, and the NHS. It also secured a major contract with IBM in the current quarter. Palantir's average revenue per customer rose 41% to $7.9 million for the full year. Its average revenue from its top 20 customers also increased 34% to $33.2 million. That expansion indicates Palantir's acquire, expand, and scale model, in which it secures a customer with one service to cross-sell additional ones over the long term, is paying off. Number four, shooting down two bearish arguments. For the full year, Palantir's government revenue rose 77% to $610 million and accounted for 56% of its top line, that growth counters the bearish notion that its government business is running out of room to grow. Meanwhile, Palantir's commercial revenue, which mainly comes from its enterprise-facing platform Foundry, grew 22% to $482 million. Within that total, its commercial revenue in the U.S. more than doubled. That growth counters the bearish claim that Palantir will struggle to grow its commercial business to reduce its dependence on government contracts. Number 3. It's gotten slightly cheaper. At $28 per share, Palantir is valued at about $52.3 billion, or 28 times next year's sales. That's still a high price-to-sales ratio for a company that aims to generate about 30% sales growth next year. But Palantir could also be sandbagging its guidance. Last September, it forecast 42% sales growth for 2020, but it actually topped that estimate by 5 percentage points. If it raises its full-year forecast over the next few quarters, its stock could actually be even cheaper relative to its sales. Palantir won't be considered a bargain anytime soon, but it seems to have cooled off after hitting its Reddit-fueled high of $45 in late January. Investors should expect another potential decline as its lockup period ends, but this dip could be a great opportunity for investors who miss Palantir's initial rally. Number 2. Ignore bears griping that PLTR stock is expensive. Looking past Wednesday's action, bears are likely to gripe PLTR is expensive, though yesterday shaved that price by almost 
But the naysayers have been warning against Palantir since the get-go this past fall when the stock traded on either side of $10. Vocal short seller Citroen Research even famously called PLTR stock a casino at the end of November when shares zipped and zagged around $30. Still, and to be nonpartisan, nails chewed to their cuticles over today's lofty 62 times sales multiple by bullish believers in the Palantir story probably aren't going away anytime soon. And mind you, that's even if PLTR comes out and literally saves the world when it reports earnings in a couple weeks. It will still look pricey. In our estimation, PLTR seems like the real deal, but it's fundamentally flawed according to the bears. Until it's not, right? That could be the path for Palantir in the months and years ahead. But let's face it, finding the next Netflix or Tesla during a lengthy battleground phase is no easy task. And holding a few stocks that do rise the challenge and enjoy a storied rally is equally challenging. Number one, keep your eye on its long-term goals. Palantir is an interesting stock to look at. For while its technology has been vital for many world-changing organizations, such as the World Food Program and COVID-19 resources, unfortunately, the company does not have much of a moral compass when it comes to deciding the purpose of its technology. While operating in the gray areas of ethical issues brings in high revenue in the form of government contracts, it could present real problems for attracting a broader range of clients in the future. You can choose your own adventure when it comes to Palantir Technologies, which is recovering modestly from the stock's post-earnings sell-off. In a weird development that vividly demonstrates just how split Wall Street is on the prospects of the data analytics company, the stock on the same day was upgraded to a buy by one firm and cut to underperform by another. Palantir stock could dip over the next few months as investors take some profits amid concerns that it's high valuation and lock up expiration. However, those declines could be great opportunities for long-term investors who are willing to tune out the noise for a few years. This article represents the option of the writer who may disagree with the official recommendation position of a Motley Fuel Premium Advisory Service. We're Motley. Questioning an investing thesis, even one of your own, helps us all think critically about investing and make decisions that help us become smarter, happier, and richer. Do let us know in the comment what you think of this stock. Please subscribe to the Stock Advisor. Thanks for watching.